We're here on a multinational science project. We're st actually studying fog, maritime fog specifically, not a coastal-based fog, but one out in the ocean, open ocean, because this is one of the fo top foggiest areas for maritime fog in the world. And so we've been very fortunate so far. We about halfway through our month, and we have uh, well into the days and days of fog, which was not necessarily the expectation coming in. Previous efforts in coastal fog generated a number of uh, interesting data sets, but they were more in the, in the timeline of hours. And so on our way up from Halifax to here, we spent uh, several continuous days in fogs taking measurements around the clock. We're measuring the upper atmosphere, the surface layer atmosphere, and then right down to the surface of the ocean itself. The interest is in the air-sea interaction. It's how the atmosphere is interacting with the ocean and how the ocean currents and the structure of the ocean is forcing back on the atmosphere. In terms of how this is generating these fogs that occur and persist for so long. And so we have a number of things called a wave glider. If you want to think of a, a giant surfboard that has solar panels on it and a bunch of instrumentation mounted on it, a propulsion system and then it has a umbilical cord with a unit that actually pulls energy from the wave motion of the ocean. They travel fairly slowly so we can deploy them and let them, but they'll go for 30 days easily. They go for quite a long distance, they're just slow, but they have a satellite link so you can monitor their position and the instrumentation in real time. And then for the first time we've deployed, in my experience, we have a small autonomous vessel. It's about the size of a full-size pickup truck and it can travel at about five, six knots, and it's got a huge suite of instrumentation on it. We can deploy it, and it operates around the vessel. It kind of gives us a mothership capability with a floating platform of instrumentations that we can control. You guys are here in St. John's. What are you doing at the moment, and where are you headed next? We just came in from a, a transit that started out of Halifax, went around Sable Island, and then came up the shelf break, which is where the deep water starts at the edge of the shelf up here. And we came into St. John's, this is our midpoint. We have some additional instrumentation that wasn't ready, and we're bringing that online now. We've, we're making some repairs. We've had some equipment that needed to be recalibrated or simply replaced. We're going to head back out to sea. We're going to transit back down across the, uh, through the Grand Banks. And then we'll eventually wind up all the way down at Sable Island at the We'll coordinate with the group that's actually on Sable Island and we'll coordinate as an offshore mobile platform and we'll do some integrated measurements there that will give us an unprecedented flexibility. And then after that, we have a experiment going into the Gulf Stream. So we'll head directly offshore into the wind and we'll watch the sea surface temperature differential, the changes, until we, get, we know we're firmly in the warmer Gulf Stream waters and at that point, we'll t turn around and slowly make our way back, doing a measurement cycle all the way back. Every time somebody has something to look at, there are so many factors that you have to consider as to how that condition arose. And so there's a, probably more work than we imagined starting this. And we started it very experienced, and we knew we were in for a, a real long time of analysis and changing the basic physics. but. It's, it's exceeded that expectation and we're not at the halfway point barely.